Hey everyone, before we learn more about Harvard University, we wanted to let you know that you can calculate your chances of admission at Harvard and other schools with your free CollegeVine account. Start by completing your chancing profile with information such as your GPA, classes, and extracurricular activities. From there, you can use CollegeVine's hub tool to see your chances and information about the school, such as cost, majors, and more. Visit the link in the description below to sign up and see your chances today. We're going to talk about campus life. It's going to be fun. So, what's being a freshman like at Harvard? Well, I have to admit to you first that I am not the best person to explain that to you because I was never a freshman at Harvard. I've done my research. I've talked to my friends. I want to say that I know some things about being a freshman at Harvard. Uh, I'll do my best. If you have questions, I'll try to answer them. But, uh... Yeah, it is what it is. So pre-orientation programs, that's before you show up at Harvard. You got all these different ones. You got the first year outdoor program. You got the first year uh, international program, the first year urban experience, the first year arts program, dorm crew. There might be a couple others. I don't know. Dorm crew, I think you get paid for. All the FOP, FIP, FUP programs, they're just kind of cool. You get to do fun things with a group of other people who share some interests with you. It's great. You end up being friendly with all these people, go through the rest of college knowing them. You got to move in. That's fun because cars are allowed in Harvard Yard where the dorms are. That, that has got to be exciting. Uh, love Story, that's organized by the Crimson Key. It's sort of like watching Rocky for a picture show. It's a quintessential part of orientation from what I'm told. Everyone shows up. You watch the 1970s movie Love Story, and uh, Crimson Key has sort of organized a whole, you know, mock thing that they, you know, scream out jokes and cracks, and they make fun of the movie as it goes along. It's apparently a great time. Uh, I mean, everyone goes, I think. Convocation, you officially become a student, and your community conversation with your proctor, uh, that's when your proctor, who's sort of your RA for the for the year, uh, sort of lays down the law, tells you how it's going to be, make sure you know what the expectations are, what you what things you need to watch out for, all that. It's a conversation. So freshmen, they live in the dorms. Uh, the dorms are on Harvard Yard. Uh, they all eat in one centralized dining hall, Annenberg. Uh, it looks like it's from Harry Potter. I got the picture below. It is not what they used to shoot Harry Potter. I think they shot it at Yale. Uh, again, don't quote me, not positive. Uh, and this is Wigglesworth. It's one of the dorms. It's located on uh, Mount Auburn Street. Oh, no, sorry. So located on Mass Ave. And uh, it's a really long, kind of funny looking dorm. But yeah, it's a dorm. Uh, the dorms are convenient. When you're an upperclassman, it gets less convenient. Annenberg, I want to say the food is not good. Sorry, everybody. But you can look forward to being an upperclassman when the food gets better. Uh, and additionally, if you have upperclassmen friends, uh, or even sometimes if there just aren't a lot of restrictions in the given period on eating an upperclassman dorm, or house, I should say, uh, then you can just go eat there. Uh, always, if you have upperclassmen friends, they can you know bring you in and you can eat with them at their house. And the food will be better, I promise. Annenberg, not great. Um, the freshman experience continued. Uh, what are proctors? Just like I said, they're RAs, but uh, they're specific for freshmen. Uh, you got your peer advising fellows. Uh, those are PAFs. They kind of are, unlike proctors who are graduate students, the PAFs are current undergrads. They're upper class people though. They'll sort of help you uh, and advise you. Uh, like we talked about before, you got Expos 20 or expository writing course. Uh, you've got freshman seminars. Uh, those are specific courses only offered for freshmen. Uh, they're really cool. I never had a chance to take them, so you should take them and I'll live vicariously through you. Um, I, I'll be jealous, I'll be honest. I think they're really cool opportunities and they're great ones offered with really interesting people. Uh, the freshman musical, the freshman put on a musical. It's a fun time. The I Am Sports, we talked about it, and freshman formal is the dance. Uh, first chance dance, yeah, some, also that. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, what's blocking and linking? These things pertain to sort of the end of your freshman year experience. Uh, your blocking group is the, the group that you go with to uh, decide where you're going to get housed. Uh, it's sort of like the sorting hat at Harvard. Uh, it's random. Well, it, I guess the sorting hat isn't random. This process is random. Uh, they just shove your whole blocking group into some house. It could be on the river. It could be in the quad. What are those two things? Stay tuned. We'll get there in a moment. Um, and uh, yeah, you don't have to live with your blocking group. You don't have to room with them, but you'll be in the same house. Lincoln Group, you won't be in the same house, but they'll be in the neighborhood of three houses that, you know, the three houses that are, the two houses that are around your house. It's a, each neighborhood has three houses. In it. So you know that you'll be living near your link mates. 
River Run, how far will Harvard freshmen go to avoid being quadded? That is being placed in one of the three quad houses. Uh, freshmen will go pretty far. River Run is when they go down to the river and try to take a shot at all nine of the river houses. Uh, obviously, I would not recommend this for health-related reasons. Also, it's not officially allowed, and the Harvard uh, University Police Department will try to stop you from doing this. Um, but every year, there are a torrent of freshmen who do run around trying to take shots uh, for some superstitious reason. They think that should they take all nine shots, uh, they will then make it into the river and not be quadded. Housing day is a really great time. That's when uh, all the people in the upper graduate, uh, the upper class people houses wake up at 5 a.m. They get the list of everyone, all the freshmen, what house they're in. They pick the freshmen who are going to be in their house. They storm their dorms and they, you know, you know, get, you know, they knock on the door and they come in, you know, you know, kazoo's blaring or whatever with all their gear and their swag. And they're like, you did it. You're in Cabot House. Uh, it's fun, um, and then everyone meets up for food in Annenberg after, which is, by the way, why I know what Annenberg food tastes like, because normally if you're an upperclassman, you can't eat there. Um, I think you can eat breakfast there, though. Uh, I have a quote from a professor, my professor Maya Jasanoff, in a British Empire's course. Uh, she said, in Team Quad versus Team River, what are some ways the underdog, and it was already assumed, I think she quite clearly uh, signaled that the underdog was Team Quad, could win, and a student screamed sabotage, and I think people agreed because... Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, if we're talking about who's surviving the zombie apocalypse, it's not going to be the quad. Sorry, quad houses. Uh, what is life like as an upper class person? Um, upper classmen live in houses, and they eat in those houses. Uh, this is a picture of my house. It's Leverett. Uh, not much has changed since this was uh, created in the, I don't know, 1700s? I don't know when that photo's from. Um, uh, the only difference is that this horse and buggy... Uh, Route in front of Leverett House is now Mem Drive. It's got cars on it except for Sundays. And there are a lot of people hanging out on the river these days. Let me tell you, everyone is jogging. There's a bike path. Everyone's sitting down there. Uh, students do work. Uh, some people just hang out. It's fun. I like the river. Uh, uh, each house has its own setup. I mean, they've got a library. They've got a gym. They've got a dining hall. They've got study spaces. This is Adam's library, I want to say. Um, yeah, a lot of fancy, beautiful, old-looking rooms, great mahogany furniture, pianos, and the like. Uh, a lot of beautiful study spaces. Of course, everything is closed right now because of corona. Uh, I've heard that the only common space that will be open is the dining hall, but I assume that things will come back should the pandemic end, um, and they'll be able to open the rest of the houses up and allow people to study together and hang out together again and have concerts and things like that. Uh, I should say there are lots of performance opportunities in-house. I used to get paid to play concerts even after I graduated in Leverett and uh, coffee houses and talent shows and all that stuff. Good times. Uh, yeah, like I said, upperclassmen houses have all kinds of amenities. Uh, there are some that I didn't list. <clears throat> uh, someone asked, are dorms and houses air conditioned? <laughs> they are not, um, but I know they've been renovating houses. And for instance, when they renovated Leverett House, they put in the air ducts to air condition the place. But apparently from their research and their consulting guidance they figured out that global warming wouldn't get so bad or climate change wouldn't get so bad that they would need ac for 20 more years so they decided it was worth it to put in the air ducts but to wait 20 years to put in the ac so that was their guidance uh it's hot in there right now i'm sure but usually by the time uh, underclassmen and upper class by the time uh, students roll in it's it's not terrible anymore um yeah uh, so they're not AC, but they will be in the future at some point. Um, and uh, like I said, many houses have their own special meetings and events, uh, lots of communal time, dining clubs. At Leverett, we had not just sherry hours where you could go to drink sherry, or if you weren't of age, you could eat any number of snacks and hang out on the roof deck, rooftop terrace thing. Uh, this is a picture of Courier where for some reason it, it kind of looks like a retirement community maybe. I, I, I'm, I it, it looks nice. Maybe it's like a hotel lobby. Uh, I, it never really struck me as a college dining hall, but uh, yeah, it does have the best food, I would say, at Harvard. Um, <clears throat> like I said before, we got two different distinct neighborhoods for upperclassmen at Harvard. You got your river houses and you got your quad houses. Uh, I've listed the river houses below, it includes my old house, Leverett, and quad houses, there are only three. For the most part, the river is more convenient, uh, the exception kind of being Mather, which is the furthest away uh, river house. It is quite far. And also the river houses are old and pretty. The exception is also Mather, which is this ugly concrete building. Uh, and also the river houses are frankly better. Um, the quad, less convenient, but there are shuttles, but you gotta rely on a shuttle. Uh, and there are also shuttles to like Mather and stuff. So if you need a shuttle, there's shuttles. Um, 
the quad does have a good community vibe i've heard i mean not that i ever went there because it's so far away but uh i've heard that they have good community there uh they have better amenities they have access to the social we'll talk about what that is it's the student organization center at hillis uh and yeah like i said before i just don't think that the quad would be the more likely of the two groups to survive the zombie apocalypse but you know should it happen we'll see i'm just not betting on the quad um Final clubs in Greek life, I'm sure a lot of you want to know about this. Uh, Harvard does have frats and sororities, and Harvard has final clubs. If you've seen uh, the social network, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> um, there are also other social clubs like the Oak and the Signet, the Signet being an uh, arts and music organized uh, organization, and the Seneca is another. Uh, the picture there is the Porcellian. It's quite unassuming from the outside, but I've been told it's unbelievable inside. I really wouldn't know. I've never set foot inside a final club, and chances are you won't either unless you really know the right people and you really want to be in one. Um, <clears throat> or, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say. Uh, final clubs have gone over some hurdles in recent years where uh, Harvard students who were in single gendered organizations were heavily sanctioned. And there was a lawsuit uh, that the Board of Alumni from these organizations put forward, which they won, it seems. It seems that single gender organizations are going to be allowed to come back. So sororities and female final clubs are returning. Final clubs had previous kind of either disbanded or they've become uh, co-ed. Uh, it's in flux. Stuff's happening. Uh, if you have questions, uh, you're probably going to have to wait and see. Uh, can I have a social life if I'm not involved in Greek life? I assume that people want to know this. Uh, and the answer is sure. Most students at Harvard are not involved in final clubs or fraternities or sororities. Uh, another question about Harvard, are the students cutthroat? Um, I would say that Harvard students are really supportive. I think that Harvard students kind of respect that if you're another Harvard student, you did something cool to get to Harvard. <clears throat> um, I think people are respectful for the most part. I don't think people are really intentionally sabotaging each other. There isn't grade deflation. It's <laughs> grade inflation, if anything. It's not that hard to get an A at Harvard, so it's not like you got to put people down to make sure you get the good grade for the most part. Uh, and uh, finally, is Harvard socially and or politically conservative? I would say that it is definitely leaning liberal, uh, but it's not super progressive the way that Wellesley or Tufts or uh, maybe a lot of liberal arts universities would be.